And then anyone else who is not the teacher, please go unmute. Um, you know, feel free to unmute if you have questions or whatever, but you know, just I know my husband will walk in and be like, rah, rah, on a class, babe. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> all right, here you go. Yes, I don't have you. the person's mic on this particular computer like the other one. So <laughs> I'll have to shoo some people away, I'm sure. So um, for those of you that don't know me, I am Patricia Kanzanari, and I am a mistress of the Laurel. And a lot of people will uh, ask, you know, oh, conflict resolution, is this about heraldry? No. Conflict resolution, is this about bed sink? No. So this is how to deal with people that you are in conflict with directly, verbally, having to work with, and how to navigate some of the ugliness that can happen in personal, um, uh, personal relationships. So first of all, let me tell you why I can teach this class. So in the SCA, I have had just about every office. I've never been a landed noble or, or queen, but I have been a great officer of state, lesser officer of state, multiple deputy positions, held every single office, was even herald for a few weeks. Um, I think I was even treasurer for a few weeks, but I don't think I forgot on the card. That would be the one I will never want to do because I hate numbers. So, but that doesn't necessarily give me credentials of conflict resolution. So my job for the last 25 years has been high-end customer service for some of the largest telecommunication companies in the world. So I, if you can think of a large oil and gas firm, I have had them as a customer. I have had the Tiger. I've had the Little Shell. I've had Halliburton. I've had them all. So dealing with conflict across multiple cultures, big groups of people, and people who are in extreme amount of stress. So I picked up a few things along the way. So hopefully I can help you get an idea of how to deal with conflict in two ways in the SCA. First of all, we're going to talk about how to deal with autocratic teams. And when you have uh, conflict trying to put on an event or an, any other kind of organized team you have in the SCA. Uh, and then we're going to talk a little bit about how to deal with personal conflicts. All right. So first thing, most people go into conflict resolution unintentionally thinking that their goal is to win this conflict. There is only two things. You can win a conflict, but you have to have a win-win. And you can have a conflict. If it's going to be win-lose, it's basically lose-lose. You cannot have a win-lose situation of conflict. The best you can hope for is to tie or both win. All right. You have to realize that a lot of people will treat this as a game. This is not a game. People who treat it as a game have something else going on and it's not wanting conflict resolution. The hurt that someone feels is very real, even if you think it's something that's silly. And there have been times when I thought, okay, I don't understand why this person is crying over the fact that their uh, telecommunications data bill is $5 too much. It happened. I don't know why. Never will know why this man was crying, but it happens. And it was real to him. Know the difference between a sincerely held belief and an opinion, because some things are just not going to change. You're not here to score points. You're not here to look better than somebody else. If you think this conflict is external, that's not the way to be. You're not here to punish somebody who's mad at you. And always remember that resolution to a problem takes two. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to resolve it where you're both happy and continue a friendship or relationship, but you both need to have some kind of conclusion or resolution. When to proceed with caution what to watch for. Do not try to resolve a conflict when someone's highly emotional or angry. Give them a chance to call, calm down, think about what happened, think about why they're in conflict, especially if you're mediating between two people. It's a little harder when it's a personal conflict. Don't try to talk people down when you're in a crowd. Take them off. 
get everything de-escalated. A conflict between two people doesn't need to have an audience. It's not a play. Um, be very cautious with people that you know will escalate situations. I don't like to think this of anyone, but I do know off the top of my head a very short list of people who love conflict because they very much want attention. And negative attention is sometimes easier to get than positive, um, positive attention. So know that going in. If you know this person is someone who typically wants some sort of attention, make sure you're not feeding into that. Um, also, proceed when you think there may be legal implications to the conflict. You can always de-escalate. You can always grab a mentor to help you with de-escalate the conflict if you don't feel that you're capable. And make sure to report conflicts that you need to report. So let's talk a little bit about conflicts you need to report. Never, never attempt to resolve these situations without, especially in the SCA, without help of the seneschalate. If there is someone who has been assaulted, harassed, someone's made a violent statement against someone, they are retaliating against something they think someone has done or done something that's illegal, these need to be reported to the Seneschal's office. You don't necessarily have to file a harassment complaint. That's, that's a personal thing that you can decide to do or not do. But these are not the things that anybody is equipped to handle unless they're professional. And as a, a deputy Seneschal, if somebody comes to me with this, I'm going to get on the phone with the Kingdom of Seneschal, who happens to be a lawyer who will call our counsel. And then we will have lawyers. And then I won't have to do anything but say yes, sir. If you run into anything like this uh, outside the SCA, but you know people in the SCA, but it's not an SCA issue, report these things to your local authorities. Don't get a group of people in the SCA to go talk to them. That never ends well. Just report. And never, ever let someone convince you that you have to resolve these conflicts with this person. It's a personal choice you can make if you want, but you don't owe it to anybody if they have done any of these things towards you to resolve this conflict face to face. There's no reason. That's very important. All right. Now that we've gotten the preliminaries out of the way. Remember two things. Some things can be resolved. Sometimes you can get closure. Sometimes you have to provide your own closure. But resolution is resolution for you. And you will make mistakes. You will say the wrong thing. You will do the wrong thing. You can't read someone's mind. You can't read their motives. Be prepared for the consequences of what you're doing. But know that it will never be 100% perfect. You can only do the best as you can as a human being. And forgive yourself for any mistakes you make. All right. So let's talk about team conflict. Is anyone in this group um, in project management, formal project management? All right. Most of you will find this very familiar because really the way that formal project management handles team conflicts is really a, a best practice and well documented. So we're going to go through these ideas uh, in the way that they would apply to mostly autocrat because really when we're putting teams together that we're dealing with, we're really putting together typically to run an event. I ran um, one of the largest small UN organizations uh, in the United States for high schoolers, about 2,500 students. I have a couple of SCA friends that ran this with me when I was in college and they are my autocratting team. We know we can autocrat things together and we just do that that way. So. That's why I do this one thing. Build a team to prevent conflict. If you have people that you work well with, grab them to run your event with you. Don't grab the person that you don't get along with, that you don't, you know, you don't have to get along with everybody. Not everybody is loud like I am. So I scare the heck out of a couple of people that are very shy and I have to approach them quietly. <laughs> but that's not their fault. That's not my fault. Just not everybody gets along. So. The best way to have a good team is to plan 
a little, you know, what they say, an ounce of uh, prevention is a pound of cure. So don't put people in places they can't succeed. Think careful about their skill set before you assign them something. Don't make the person that is typically late to everything that happens your uh, person that needs to open gate. That's just not a place they're going to be successful. My sister will be late to her own funeral. Would not make her the person opening a door. Maybe the person that puts the chairs on the table, but plan for what they do. Establish ground rules. When you do um, do autocratic events, uh, do most of you have meetings? I tend to have calls with my inner crew, and I set an expectation for the team. Look, we're, we're doing a conference call, so I want everybody to raise their hand. I want everybody to um, be polite. If you've got something that's a problem, you don't feel comfortable, let's talk about it. You can write them out. Nobody stops you from doing that, and then no one can argue about what the rules are. Have an effective communication plan. Tell everyone how many meetings you're going to have. Tell them what the time expectation is to go to those meetings and define how you can best reach them. If Lord Bob is a Facebook person, I need to write that down. If Lady Susanna is the person I need to text, I need to write that down. Because how they best see their information is a little bit your responsibility. And if you know they're not going to read their email and you send them email, that's a little bit on you. So plan accordingly. Solve any conflicts early. Watch for people who seem to be getting crossways with each other. If they seem to be arguing a lot, maybe it's just their personality, but get ahead of it. Uh, don't let it become something other than just a little sniping. All right. So Don Yajia is our work's absolute best de-escalation person. I swear she could talk and lion into putting his head in your lap and letting him be petted. So this is the patented Don Yajia de-escalation technique. When you go into uh, trying to resolve conflict between two, uh, two people, verbalize. Don't email. Email is not a great way to communicate. I will send an email to somebody and they will send it back to me and say, are you mad at me? It's like, no, I love you. You're awesome. Uh oh, well, you, were, you sent me a one sentence email. That doesn't mean I'm mad at you. That means I have 45 emails to get out on this. So face to face, let people see your face. Video is even better because then you can see if someone's getting tense or making a face or et cetera. Um, when you talk to people, tell them you could speak freely and in confidence here about this. Now, there are a few things that you, you can't hold on to, like someone assaulted me, et cetera, if you're a report, person that's required to report, obviously. But providing the person to be able to be heard out, no matter how weird or ridiculous their side of the story is, let them finish it. Clarity, state your intention to solve the problem. Say, we're going to talk about this and we're going to solve this conflict within a certain amount of time, a reasonable amount of time. Ask them lots of questions. Get as much information as you can. This will help you work between the two parties. Allow them to say stupid things and vent. You know, allow them to say, this jerk did such and such and such and such and I hate them and they're... I hate their mother, I hate their brother, I hate the, their dress, I hate where they live. Now, they don't necessarily mean that. We just say a lot of silly things when we're mad. Allow them to run out of steam before you try to resolve things. Be empathetic. Let them know you understand. Yes, I understand that you're frustrated, and I really don't want to see that happen. Show your empathy. If you can be empathetic, then grab somebody who's really good at that and have them help you because that's very key. People need to feel heard. Document, take notes, write down what they said because I assure you after they vented and said that so-and-so's tunic is ugly and they need to move to Albania, you're not going to remember all the important things. You know, you're just going to remember that for some reason they need to move to Albania and you don't remember why. 
So the weirdest things will stick with you. Write notes. Um, restate. Once you're done, say, look, what I hear you saying is Joe Bob did this thing and you don't feel like it was respectful and you really want him to apologize. So offer them an action-based resolution. You want him to apologize. That's an action-based resolution. There will be a absolute line in the sand that that thing will happen or not happen. That's what you're working for. So you can all agree what's going to resolve this. Thank them for being willing to resolve the issue because a lot of pe people will walk off and be mad and die mad about it. I like to joke that Beatrice likes to tell people to die mad about it. Jane does not want people to die mad about it. Jane wants people to figure it out themselves and be happy. Trust. Keep your word. If you say you're going to address it, make sure you address it. Don't walk away. Don't bleed out what was said. Did you know that so-and-so said that Bob should move to Albania and his tunic is ugly? You know, that that's not the purpose. Let them confide. Be trustworthy. All right. So for those of you in project management, there are these six ways to deal with a conflict. We've already talked about plan to prevent. You have withdrawing, avoiding, smoothing or accommodating, compromising or reconciling, forcing or directing, collaborating and problem solving. Those are the six. So let's talk about what situations you use what gen, because you are gonna use all of them in, in certain situations. Withdraw or avoid. When you have two people who are conflicting, let's say, and these are my little markers, we have the person who was in charge of making sure there's toilet paper in the bathroom and the, and the feastocrat, and they get in a conflict. You take them aside and say, guys, you know, I, I don't have time for this. We're doing this event today. You stay out of Susie Cook's way and you stay out of John Toilet Paper's way and we're not going to have this conflict and we'll talk about this next week when we do the rundown of how this happened. You know, we're not going to talk about it today because it's, it's counterproductive to the event. It's counterproductive to everything. You know, it may not look like you're bleeding. So pick that and you do need to probably pick up and resolve it later, even if you do avoid. It may blow over and you might go back to John Nasty Crat and he say, I, did I have a conflict? I forgot, did I have a conflict with the Beast of Crat? I guess I did. It may just be something they forget. Happens more often than you think. Smoothing or accommodating. Well, this is when you have, <laughs> you just have to make kind of make everybody happy the best they can. Let's say you have a ball going on and it's running late and you've got a bunch of people who are going to clean the hall and they don't want to wait for the dancers to get through dancing. So what do you do? You accommodate. You say, OK, guys, you want to be home by how how late? How long do you think it's going to be to clean this place? And then you go to the dancers and say, hey, guys, can you kill it in about half an hour? And can some of you volunteer to help clean up? Because these people are staying a little later than they expected. If because they're accommodating your dancing. Easy enough to do. It makes you seem like a good leader. And it stops a lot um, uh, of conflicts. Now it's often not, a, not recommended because it makes you look like a weak leader, but the day of an event, it doesn't matter <laughs> whether you look weak or strong. All right, force or direct. Joe Bob and Susan Bob. Toilet paper people, two different privies. Joe Bob took all my toilet paper and didn't leave enough for me. You will have silly, petty arguments. Look, you have to sometimes treat them the way that the argument has been. All right, Joe Bob, give Susie Bob half your toilet paper and y'all stay away from each other and don't, don't deal with each other. You know, it's like when you have to tell your kids, look, go hang over here, you play your game, you hang over here and play your game. Just stop because this is not productive. 
And it's often when you need a quick solution, but you will know when you just have to tell people it's got to happen. And you have to be willing to do that. And you have to be willing to take the consequences of somebody being hurt by that action. But if it's something that has to be done at the time, be prepared to talk to them later, always. Collaborate or problem solve. This is the optimal thing. Let's say your feastocrat and your treasurer, your group, are having a disagreement over how much to spend on the feast. They want to spend $5,000 on the most fabulous feast ever, and you have $500. This is clearly something you have to have a consensus over. Yes, you can tell the feastocrat you have to cook $500, but you know what happens when you do that? You usually lose your feastocrat because they have this grand idea. So sitting down with somebody, giving them multiple ways they can get what they want um, within their budget is worth the, the ask. And having the treasurer sit down with them and say, okay, this is why we have to keep it in this budget. Always try to use this as much as possible, but sometimes it, this is the only thing that is ever really truly going to work. And if you use any of the other options, be prepared to do this after the fact, because people are gonna wanna know your reasoning for telling them, look, just, this, just stop, but we're done. We gotta get our event done. So. Treat people how you want to be treated, and you will be in a good shape with the team. All right. Compromise and reconcile. Let's say the crown wants to have court for six hours, and the feast crowd has to hold feasts. Well, you guys are going to have to compromise. You're going to have to tell the crown, look, can we do some of the, can we do some of our court during feast? The feast crowd is trying to keep chicken from being, bounce off of the concrete pavilion. It's so dry. And, you know, we, we didn't plan for that. It doesn't, um, but just telling people to work it out doesn't usually work very well, but there are times when you're going to have to do that as well. All right. Steps to resolve between two people. Identify the issue. Understand what everybody wants out of it list possible solutions, have them both evaluate the options, have them select it, write it down, what everybody agreed on, and agree on how you're going to prove that's the way you did it. If you have, let's say, let's use the toilet paper thing. It got way out of hand. There was toilet paper everywhere and people were throwing at each other. You know, everybody wanted to have enough to do their job. You know, the solution was, let's not throw it. We look through all the options. We could go to Walmart and buy more. But there's always more toilet paper unless we've got a pandemic. And we're not going to have an event in a pandemic. We know that. Um, the option, we've decided we're going to go to Walmart. We're going to write down that Joe Bob's going to go to Walmart and get more toilet paper. And we're going to uh, agree that we agreed on the numbers. And when you get the receipt back, we know the toilet paper was bought and everybody did what they were supposed to. Simple, simple in some ways. Hard to always get right, but this is the best step to do everything. And if you don't document it, the Romans had a saying called non scriptus, non est. And for those that don't speak Latin, which I don't, I just happen to know what it means. It means if it is not written, it doesn't exist. And how many times in, at work or in conflicts or talking to someone did you say, but you told me X, Y, Z. And, and they're going, no, 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 that's not what I said. Well, it may have been what they said. Maybe it wasn't what they meant. No telling. Maybe they forgot. Maybe they've got Alzheimer's. Maybe they don't want to remember because they regret it. You know, always write it down. All right, guys. So let's. Take a little break and see if anybody has any questions on working with teams. Done a lot of events. And sometimes you have to break people up and deal with personalities quickly the day of. But if you lay it out beforehand, you will have less problems going forward. All right, anybody got a question? All right, hopefully that is useful information. 
So in light of the fact that we've all spent way too much time on Facebook since we've been all at home, locked up, we're going to talk about the personal conflict. We're seeing a lot more of this lately, and I would like to think that the reason we have so much of this is we take more than half of our language from facial features, from tone of voice, from hand motions, to the way someone's sitting, um, and we don't get that in writing. And not everyone is trained to write well. I try to explain at work. I deal with people who are technical consultants, and I'm the project manager. And I get somebody to say, well, this person didn't tell me anything I understood. And it's like, oh, no problem. Let me translate. If this person were an English major, they would not be your Azure, you know, uh, lake consultant. You know, that's what their job is. Their job is not to write. My job is to write and translate for you. So, all right. Personal conflict. Oops. Hey, Bia, somehow you got muted. Oh, okay, there you are. <laughs> I don't know how that happened, sorry. All right, let's try again. <laughs> so thanks to think about the personal re uh, resolution and resolving personal conflicts is Socrates' rule. When you go into it, ask yourself, is what you're talking about true, kind, or necessary? If you can't answer one of those questions, you need to proceed with caution in resolving the conflict. How many times have you had a conflict with somebody and they said something and somebody else heard something and then said, you know, you know, you might have said, you know, so and so really need to show him their tunic. And you're thinking in your head, you know, I should teach so and so how to him or find somebody to help him. And people come around going, Bia thinks his tunic is ugly and he can't dress himself. Well, that's not what you said, but it might be what they heard. So if you have a conflict, sometimes the information is not correct. Be prepared for you to be the one who doesn't understand what happened. Always be willing to say, you know, I misunderstood that. I'm sorry. You never lose anything for that. Always confirm the facts. Don't have somebody say, you know, when you ask somebody, do you want... Are you sure you want another piece of cake? You know, and then they think, you've just called me fat. No, you were worried about the fact that it's hot out there and sugar's not the best thing to be eating all day and you really haven't drank anything. Exactly. Always confirm your facts. Did they really say that? If you're having a conflict on a matter of faith or personal belief, you're not going to get someone to change your mind their mind. They've spent a life with having real ideas. I mean, if you're the atheist in the room, you are not going to convince the Roman Catholic that God does not exist and he's, you know, fooling himself. Not going to happen because it's a sincerely held belief. Can you get to the place where you could say, I'm an atheist and I respect that you have this feeling and I want you to be my friend and we'll work through this? Yes, of course. I mean, there are a few things that you're probably not going to agree on and can't be friends over, but you'll know what they are. Also, check yourself. There's a, a, a long, really funny uh, comedy routine about people you resent and aggravate you. And it's the biatch eating cracker situation. And he says, the woman goes, hmm. Look at her over there eating those crackers like she owns the place. There are going to be some people that no matter what they do, because they've been a pain in the butt for so long, you are just everything you do, they do is going to aggravate you. I have a woman here. We are probably both our own biatch eating crackers because whatever she does aggravates me. And I just have to take a deep breath and say, Etienne, you've got to deal with her. And I'm sure she has someone who has to deal with me. We are just polar opposites. We're not bad people. She's just my biatch eating crackers. Just 
whatever she does, aggravates me. Just make sure that's not the situation. It's not you in that situation. The most important thing is to take blaming language out of it. Don't go on the offensive. Don't go to somebody and say, I heard you were talking ugly things about me. That's that's going to make anybody upset, even if they didn't say something ugly about you, because they're going to think, you think I'm the kind of person that talks, you know, behind your back or says ugly things to other people. Even if they are the person that does that, the best thing to say is, I heard this and I, I really hate to listen to people when they tell me things like this, but I heard it from more than one person. Um, do we really have a problem? Can we talk about this? That's a totally different thing. And you told so-and-so and so-and-so uh, you hate me. You know, totally different thing. Even if that's what they said, not the way to get things resolved. Listen actively. Do not listen to respond. This is the worst thing to do. I do this constantly. So get out a notepad and just take notes because that will keep you from having to talk back because if it's the kind of situation where you're going to clap back at somebody, just write what that clap back was or what you wanted to say to them to that thing and don't let them see it and then look at it and make it politer than you probably wrote it when you felt it. Because only person that can can be made to look bad is you. You can make yourself look better or worse. They're going to be whatever they are. Try not to make yourself the person who doesn't listen and never tries to understand anyone. Take them seriously, no matter how silly you think their problem is, because sometimes that you feel will feel that arguments are silly. But they may have a point and you may miss it if you're not listening. Don't make accusations. Um, begin with the, your statements within yourself. I feel really hurt by what you did. Not you said something ugly and hurt me. Totally different things. Accusations just divide. This is how people get angrier at you and make you look like the bad guy, even if you're not, because you did it the wrong way. In arguing the arguer, not the argument. So internet trolls, favorite game, argue, you know, oh, you that book's, you know, not good enough. And, you know, we didn't argue about whether or not Nazis were bad. We were arguing about whether or not the book is good enough to tell Nazis are bad. And I don't know how we get there, but we do. And, you know, we have ridiculous arguments arguing with the arguer and not the argument. Stick to the topic. Keep a lid on your emotional responses. If you're angry and crying and frustrated, get, get yourself together because you're going to say something you regret. Even if it's 100% the truth, you mean it. You would say it uh, even if you weren't upset. <laughs> you probably put it better if you weren't upset at the time. And it never looks good when you go to somebody in a conflict and throw a tantrum. It just doesn't because it makes you look unreasonable, even if you're 100% valid. So pick your time, let your adrenaline go down. It helps everyone. Don't be afraid to compromise. Don't be afraid to say you're wrong. Ask yourself the first thing before you go into conflict, is this the hill I wanna die on? Do I wanna die on the hill to, of you said my tunic was ugly? Do I really care? You know, is this, something that's important, there will be hills you want to die on. There will be important things that matter to you. There will be things that matter to everybody. And the person may just be horrible and may do something horrible. Those people are really few and far between. So ask yourself if it's important. But know why it's important. Because if you can argue, argue why it's important, you can usually resolve something. Don't become the person that uses um, uses your influence, your position to get your own way. I know that there are lovely, many lovely people that are dukes, duchesses, countesses. And because we're all human, we will do something wrong. Just because someone has a hat or you perceive someone to be better at you in the society, it's still okay to say, hey, 
Um, I really, you really hurt my feelings with that. You know, that hat doesn't insulate them. And they don't want to get a reputation for getting away with everything they do and getting their own way just because of a hat. They want to be people too. It hurts them. So be honest. This is often the only way to resolve a dispute. There's very rarely a dispute you have with somebody where you say, okay, well, you totally agreed with me now. Thank you. When, when have you ever had an argument with somebody and said, oh, I'm so glad you totally 100% see my way and you're giving me 20 bucks for no reason? That never happens. You've got to figure out in an argument what you're going to compromise on and what you're not. And you will know what those things are. I don't compromise with people that have that treat people like lesser people because of, you know, who they love, who they are, the color of their skin. That's a non-negotiable for me. You know, and maybe we can agree. I can go to somebody who feels that way and say, you know, we can just agree to stay out of each other's way. And that's a compromise. You know, I don't have to go start a fight with you. I feel like you'll get you'll get your own in my own way. I will feel that the Sicilian in me will say you will get your own. It'll happen. Don't be afraid to compromise. Don't talk about the conflict with others. Because that's just, you might as well not have even talked to somebody about it. Now, okay. There are times when I have a conflict with somebody and I don't know if I handled it the right way. And I have a few select people that I talk to. Uh, there's a particular pelican that's a good friend of mine. And she's a lawyer and she's very good at, you know, this kind of thing. And I can go to her and say, you know... I did this and it caused a big ruckus because the person's really a problem. And I tried really hard. Did I really do everything I could do? And a lot of times she will say, yes, you did everything, you know, you meant to do. The person was unreasonable and a problem. And, you know, you can't you can't do anything about it. But and it's good to have a sounding board. But going and saying going around and saying, I talked to so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so did this and I had to let them do this just to get along. And no, don't be that kind of person. It's never good. And if you don't have anyone to talk to, write down the situation, write down how you were hurt, read it back to yourself. You will sometimes see things that you didn't realize were there. And be willing to have somebody Tell you you're wrong when you talk to your best friend or your officer upline or your, you know, your best friend might say, you know, that was really stupid. Maybe you should try that again. And that's what you have a best friend for, because we are not perfect. Try not to take it personally, especially in officer situations. I, I recently had a, a huge conflict with someone in an officer situation who was a deputy seneschal. Not going to name the group, not going to name the person. I handled it the best I could. They did a bunch of ugly things. And at the end of the day, they looked like a jerk. And when I went to my um, mentor and said, gosh, I Oops. I unmuted you again. I'm so sorry. I was trying to let it's somebody okay. in and I muted you. <laughs> And when I uh, talked to my mentor, my mentor said, there's nothing you could have done, you know, except, you know, just let somebody else handle it. But you're you and you want to fix things. And maybe this is something you couldn't have fixed, but you tried. And that actually matters. Um, you know, try to make sure that, you know, they're not lashing out at you. They may be lashing out at the world. Or they may be lashing out at somebody else through you you know you may represent they may be mad at the sca and you represent the sca and so now you're the surrogate for the entire board for the rest of your life you know it it's not you it's them so know when to separate the two watch for body language this is why um this is why i think video is really good if you're having to talk to somebody long distance or not face to face. Um, watch to make sure that when you're having, you're getting to the table to resolve something, they are actually sitting at the table. Because if you've got the person doing this and leaning back in their chair and giving you the stink eye, 
They are not ready to talk about it. Just tell them, you know what? I can still see you're upset. Let's let's talk about this when when we have some time. There's, you know, I, I really want to talk about this, but I don't feel like this is a good time. Easy enough. That's honest. Some people are conflict avoidant no matter what. And if they're completely conflict avoidant, typically having a third party mediator and using the steps you use in the team can really um, take things off, uh, the tension off. Try to find a mediator that they will respect and that you respect. You know, if somebody gets mad at me and they're in the rapier community, I can always grab Tessa because they're not going to tell Tessa she's wrong. <laughs> And Tess is the kind of person that will tell you, Bia, that was not a good thing to do. You should not have done that. She's a great person to mediate things. You know, and, you know, somebody we both respect universally. Doesn't matter. Um, like I said, if you see somebody with type body language, they feel threatened to back off. And that's going to tell, um, tell you what mood they're in. Uh, and don't stand over somebody. If you're going to resolve something with somebody, sit down, go to their level, physical level, sit at a table, you know, sit in a chair. Don't be the six foot two person standing over the five foot two person saying, I really want to have conflict resolution with you. That's, that's not a good idea. Because I usually do this and then want to punch you. So the fact that I don't is good. All right. Know when to apologize and forgive. We all hate to apologize. We all hate to admit we're wrong. If you can't apologize for something you knew you did wrong, you're not going to resolve a conflict. And you need to really think about why you're not apologizing for something that you know you did wrong. Because no one's going to think less of you because we're all human. No one's perfect. Forgive my favorite Persian saying, forgive not because they deserve it, but because you deserve peace. There are people that will wrong you in life and you will never forget. You will never trust them again. That you'll come out of your life. It'll be over. But if you carry them around and carry that hatred around or carry that resentment around, you will never know peace. And you know, you have to, resentment is like taking poison and waiting for someone else to die. Another favorite of mine, because it's so true. You know, it, you're the one who's going to live with it. They may not even realize you're still mad at them and you're resenting things. And only a jerk does not accept an apology, uh, an apology honestly given. We typically know when someone means their apology. There's body language involved, the way they put it. The person that goes and, sorry, is not apologizing. They're just being forced to. But if you don't accept the apology, apology you're, you're being a jerk. <laughs> don't do that. You know, you can decide to cut them out of your life, but at least take the apology. Focus on the now. No one wants to hear. You remember when you did that two years ago and said that my tunic is ugly back at coronation of so-and-so and so-and-so and -so who are not even in the STA anymore. And, you know, that no, get to it right now. If you're hurt by something, don't hold it around. Don't let it poison you. If you feel you need a witness, then you are probably not ready to resolve the conflict except in a very narrow band. There are people that are these people that want negative attention. So you know you want to witness because they're going to make negative attention out of this and they're few and far between. But, you know, generally, if you feel threatened by them, it's not time to resolve. If you need to wait. Let them know you want to talk to them about it. It's like, you know, you really hurt me this afternoon, but I need to think this through and we've got an event to do and we're going to talk about this next week. Or we're going to talk about it some other event we see each other. Doesn't even have to have a date. Just don't bring up the past and use it as a weapon. People make mistakes. Don't bring up something someone, but oh gosh, if you're in ever in a circle of any type, there's always going to be that one person that said, 
35 years ago, they stepped on my toe and I have been mad about it since then. And so therefore, because they were 19 and stepped on my toe, they should not ever get to be a Pelican ever. You know, you're always going to have that one person. I, I don't know why. Some people hold on to things, remember things forever. Allow people to have personal growth. Give them that. They work for it. Let them earn it. Um, and they do change. Yeah, I've known people that I could would not have been in a room with because they were really horrible people when I met them. And they are people I can trust now because they had life changing situations and became much better people. Humor is not always a good tool. I'm really bad about throwing humor around because I think it diffuses tension, but you can't diffuse tension for someone who doesn't get your humor. If you've got a French absurdist sense of humor and that person's very literal, that's not going to go well. You know, Clark, my son and I both have an absurdist sense of humor. Etienne does not. So Dante and I will say, you know, buying, buying shirts at the soup store and just laugh uproariously. And he has no clue why we're, we're happy. He just wants us to stop because it's about the fourth non sequitur he's heard. So make sure you're not being dismissive, We're using humor and being dismissive of somebody's true beliefs to be easy to do. Um, and sometimes you're using it as an excuse or a shield. Oh, yeah, I was ADHD that day. Sorry about that. No, that's not a real apology. And that's just being humorous about it. It's not taking them seriously. Sometimes when it's self-deprecating, it can work especially if you really did derp or do something really stupid. Sometimes you can really soften things a little bit that way, but you got to follow it up with true, honest words. Can't just, or do the true, honest words and then make the joke. It's okay, but, you know, know your audience. Know their humor if you're going to use it. It's probably best to avoid it unless they're people you know really well. Decide how important the relationship is. Sometimes you are not, you're, you're going to resolve the situation. You're going to have a resolution. And that resolution is that person's going to hate you forever. They're never going to forgive you. They want nothing but negative attention and you are a great target. You know, decide how important the, the it is to fix because sometimes you're not going to be able to fix it. You're going to have to deal with that. Um, and you know, some, most conflicts are temporary and have solutions. I had a conflict with a friend from high school back in the good old 80s. And in 1997, I ran into her at a club where her husband was playing music and we got to talking and figured out that a totally third person told this story that caused us to hate each other and we were best friends. So... You know, you can, people will, you will walk away from someone and push down your life and you may come back and they may give you your best friend again. We go all, all over, all the town now. We go to shows, we're, we're good friends again. Now, we've both cut that third person out of our lives <laughs> because they were the problem. But, you know, you can, you can really screw something up if you don't try to get your facts straight and you don't. Um, and don't always have to write someone off. Be prepared to fail. I swear this is, we're getting to the end. <laughs> we're all human. We're going to get it wrong. Morality, human rights issues, often relationship ending. And, you know, when that happens, you know, there's grief. I had a um, good friend recently who's she and her husband I had known for, oh, I'd known her husband for 30 years and her for a decade. And. They had a horrible, abusive relationship I didn't know about. Very serious. And I had to cut him out of my life. Friend I'd had for 30 years. And I grieve for that. It's almost like a debt. And those things are going to happen. And you can't resolve those conflicts. But allow yourself the ability that, to know that you couldn't have done anything. You can't grieve. And sometimes it, the conflict is so important and they're so dismissive, you do have to let them die and mad about it. You know, this is a part of my fundamental being. And, you know, 
if I don't believe this way, you're going to be mad. I'm sorry. You're going to have to die mad about it. The Sicilians even have a whole word for it. They don't even have a phrase. It's a word. Amadikaru. That means die mad about it in Sicilian. Uh, be the person someone can apologize to. Don't put up that wall and tell them that, you know, you never want to, you know, you're never willing to take an apology. You know, and you may get that person back in your life. They may come and even the worst thing, you know, there are people that work with gang members. There are people that work with people in, you know, white wing violence groups that come out and, you know, say I was wrong. You know, be the person that will be there for a friend who needs, you know, their reality back. And they went down a really dark path. You can be that person. It's, there's no. And you can be that person by choice, whether you choose to or not. There's no wrong in not choosing that either. All right. Well, I hope this was helpful. I know it's a lot to think about. I'm going to also um, put the presentation up in the um, video. Um, does anybody have any questions or anything they want to discuss or any situations they've had that they weren't sure they handled well or want to throw out to the group? All right. Well, look, you know, I am Southern Regional Seneschal. It is my job to help with conflict resolution. If you have someone you're in conflict with and I know them and you want to have a sincere talk with them and you need a mediator, I am very willing to do that. If you need to have a conflict resolution with somebody and you don't know how to go about it, ping me. I'll help you with that. I, or I may send you to somebody who may know them better, who may be able to help you know how to approach them. Because I've been in this organization 30 years. I know just about everybody. So, all right, guys. I hope you have a good night. I hope this was helpful. And let me know um, if we can help any time in the future. Thank you so much for teaching, Bia. That was great. Um, I think Maureen did have a oh. question. Oh, great. It's really off topic. I was waiting to make sure nobody had any on topic questions. An off topic question is fine. <laughs> okay. I didn't want to derail you. But oh, yeah, actually, Katharina, about... you may want to stop recording. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, here. Okay. Uh, da -da -da -da. okay. All right. All right. What's your question?